Hey guys, today we are going to look at six incredibly expensive foils, especially compared with the non-foil price. Now these cards are legacy staples, they are ED8 staples. They are some of the best cards you could have invested in a long time ago. So let's start with Food Chain. McKady Mask is a set with a lot of valuable foils. You have obviously Brainstorm, Counterspell, Dark Ritual. It kind of reminds me of a Masterpiece set, right? Instead of having foil Masterpieces, you have foil Commons and Uncommons. Food Chain is right now a $162 foil. That's a lot of money for a foil. Now, Food Chain is a tier 2.5. I don't want to say it's tier 2 legacy deck. It is something that has an infinite combo, and people like it. It's also a great card in EDH. When I played Macadian Mask, Food Chain was always kind of a valuable card, always respected, but once it rotated out, you could have got foil copies for very cheap. Most of the Macadian Mask foils were only expensive much, much later. The most notable being the Brainstorm. That Brainstorm, I believe I saw a copy of it and I didn't want to buy it because I thought it was too expensive. But now in hindsight, I should have got it. Next, uh, the next set of foils we will talk about is 7th Edition. This is generally considered one of the most valuable sets in terms of foils, where regular foils, I have a foil on Common Angel, and that angel is worth like 20 bucks. Tainted Afer is a $3 regular card, but as a foil from this set, it is 66, let's just call it $67. And this is the typical foil multiplier of 7th edition Birds of Paradise, Lord of Atlantis, you name it, as long as it is in 7th edition and it is foil, it probably has some increased value. Uh, one of the reasons this is true is 7th edition was one of the first sets with foil. It might have been the first set. I'm not entirely sure if it was that set or if it was. The first foil card I ever saw was from Urza Saga. It was Lightning Dragon, which was the pre-release. Now, I don't know if 7th edition happened or if Urza's Legacy and Urza's Destiny, which had foils, happened. But I do know that when the foils came out, there wasn't this big hoopla. There wasn't this great multiplier in price. It was kind of like, oh, that's nice. But And it actually got bad where people were accused of cheating because they had one foil copy and it was like a different card. Which could still happen today, but back then sleeves were not as sleeves were not as advanced. I want to say so it was like easier to cheat. I'm not exactly sure, but I know that people were accused of cheating. Pro players were accused of cheating because they were using foils as their lands or something else. Next, we have this. Um, anytime you have a legendary creature and you can get it for cheap. You probably need to buy for cheap because it could end up as Akum Dragson. Very good. I mean, there's some cards that only get stronger. Snapcaster will only get better. This card is only going to get better because there will only be better artifacts. There will only be better things you can do. Very, very strong card. It's not surprising to me. It is a $77 foil given its ed 8 pedigree if you will it's the end all be all for that deck it's the combo piece right well i guess it's not the combo piece it's the piece that finds you the combo one of the fascinating things about as i i've been playing magic for so long uh, so many years and what i found out to be true or what i can convey to you is foil legendaries always have value even to say even I should have collected them. Like my friend was collecting foil legends because that's what his collection was all about. I was more about playability. In time, the collection, the collectability 
will be always outweigh playability because not every card after it rotates out will be worth any money. Rotation is absolutely a slaughter, and that is what is coming soon. All right, another card that has recently been interesting, Tainted Pack from Odyssey. So Tainted Pack has, as you see from this graph, gone from relatively unknown to expensive, but the foil has a even larger increase as a percentage and as a monetary figure. One of the interesting things to know about uh, a speculation, uh, this is a very good question, is should you buy the foil copy or should you buy multiple copies of the regular version? If you're basing your speculation on EDH, always buy the foil copy. Always buy the foil copy. If you're basing your speculation on standard, like, let's say Sahili Ra, you think she's really good, and then Feldian Guardian gets, reprint, or gets printed, then buy the non-foil copies. And that's it. Standard, non-foil. ED8s are eternal, maybe even modern. Modern's kind of like in between. But ED8s, foil. It's pretty simple, right? So it depends on your speculation. Not only should you just make a speculation, you should know, you should have a good understanding of, hey, why am I speculating on this card? Now, I will talk about one of my favorite cards in all of Magic. It is the Foil Eternal Witness from the original Fifth Dawn. Fifth Dawn, I was in high school, in senior, I was senior year of high school, and we bought a Fifth Dawn booster pack, or booster box. It was like our first booster box we bought from eBay. And we split it half-half, and my friend actually was trying to get the elementals or whatever they are they cost like one of each i would call them like the the fifth dawn creatures that were super expensive but you could pay one of each color to summon them and they were like decently good we pulled a eternal witness foil and at that time i just fell in love with the card and i traded like a bunch of it i over traded for it at the time but i knew this card was beautiful i thought it was amazing I've always loved this card in foil. I've been able to get, my, I've been very lucky and I've been able to get my hands on a playset of them in foil as long and along with a playset of Kitchen Finks, which I prefer the FNM, which foil, which is kind of nice. I don't know, it's whatever, right? Beautiful card in person and something that I truly, as I grow older, Magic cards are more about like your sentimental value than actual value, real value. And that's kind of interesting to say as a quote unquote finance channel. I, I love this card so much. And uh, this was before Falia, before um, Malera. Yeah. All right, let's end it with a boom and we're going to end it, end it with Unified Will. A <laughs> 28. Let's call it $29 foil. Mm. Mm. So what I don't like, so I, I've told you what I love about those five other foils. Well, I'm going to tell you what I don't like about this one. A, it's Rise of the Jazzy, so a relatively recent set. B, it has gone up recently a ton. But it is one of those cards that is being played in modern. So it's not, it has high playability, and in EDH, it's kind of met. Like, in EDH, you have regular counterspell, you have remand, which you actually have in modern as well, but you have mana drain, you have access to, you even have force of will, which I guess you could say is too blue. Uh, mana leak, which you have access in modern, but this is not something that is an EDH, so to card, so to see this gap, uh, this gap symbolizes to me that it's an EDH card and not something that people are playing in modern. And people are playing in modern. I don't want to say it is bad. It is extremely powerful. And there's a reason that it has spiked from pretty much no money to the $3 it currently is. Love the card, but my gut feeling tells me that the foil is not this valuable and it's inflated demand from stores. Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.